Hey, 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 welcome back to the channel, peeps. This is part three of the Three Degree of Freedom Motion Simulator platform electronics videos. Now, the usual sales pitch first up. Thanks to all who have subscribed. Really appreciate you guys. That's not a sales pitch. That's from the heart. Anyone who's new to the channel, the doctor would encourage you to please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button because that helps the doctor. And the doctor appreciates those that help him on his journey to help you. Okay, now mentioned previously in uh, the first electronics video, the overview, guys. I talked about how I was running two lots of fuses for my setup, fuses from the power supply to the IBT2s, and then a fuse from the IBT2s to the motor. This is a good idea. As I said, a man can never have too many fuses. So here's the doctor at the moment setting up uh, his wiring here that will go from his power supply to his IBT2. Now you'll notice I've done some soldering here between my fuse, inline fuse terminal here and the wire that's going to run to the IBT2. One end will go into the power supply, one end will go to the IBT2. Now I've, I've done basically what's called a, a group solder here where you basically allow the two ends to, to be frayed, you push them into each other and then you wind them together and then you apply solder on the top. Now these are pretty thick wires, okay? This is like a 16 gauge, uh, eight, maybe even 18 gauge, that's in American uh, wire here. It's actually too thick really for the IBT2s. Um, but I'm using it because I want good heavy wires going from my power supply to my IBT2s and vice versa going to the motors. We don't want unnecessary resistance to those uh, locations because we want um, everything to function with all the power that it can possibly get. So we're using heavier wires um, and you are limited to a degree with those terminal blocks on the IBT2s. They don't take super large wire. So as you can see guys, I'm running some heat shrink over this and this is something that we will do for all of our soldering joints, okay? Wherever we've stripped wires, tinned them and then uh, we're joining them, we always place some heat shrink over the top of those connectors. We don't want anything bare uh, that can lead to trouble with things um, contacting each other in our box. We certainly don't want our 240 volt contacting any parts of our box or we are going to be fried chicken and we don't want that. So you need to use extreme caution, particularly at the 240 volt or your 120 volt or 220, wherever you are in the world, you need to use extreme caution when you're wiring those power supplies to make sure there are no bare wires, you know, anywhere near any elements of your metal box or any box that you use Otherwise, guys, that is highly dangerous. So you've got to be very careful. Use extreme caution. This is the 12 volt side. Uh, regardless, it, all those connections or any bare wires, they also need to be kept from each other and made sure that there can be no bare wires contacting one another. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to add some heat shrink. Now I'm using a heat gun to uh, shrink my heat shrink. You can use a cigarette lighter, you can use, uh, you can do this. <gasps> You'll just be there for a long time. Uh, I find a heat gun is, a, an ex is an excellent way of doing it, nice and clean, pretty much fumeless. And there we've got a good, strong, uh, protected coating over our bit of solder we've done there. So that's what we'll be doing uh, throughout the wiring of this, so that's what you guys need to do, and all this stuff was mentioned in the tools needed video, right early on in the series of what you would need to successfully get this built. You'll need heat shrink, you'll need some way of shrinking your heat shrink, and you'll need uh, a total of six inline fuses, okay, similar to this one. Okay guys, so this is what I've done. I've now placed my piece of ply with my IBT2s and my Arduino on it, into my lid. So my lid already had these four M3 bolts that are welded into the top of the lid. They used to hold a large circuit board uh, when this was a server box. I just marked where those uh, bolts are uh, on my ply. I've drilled my ply so it sits through and then I can run some nuts on each one of those to hold my ply in place. Okay, so I put my ply, my ply in the lid and I've basically marked onto the metal lid now inside the holes where I need to now drill my metal lid to take my connectors for the IBT2 power 
terminals to the motors and also for our 360 degree hall sensor pots. Now they're not going to come through the lid, they'll come through the side of the box down here. I'll be drilling three holes um, to take uh, the hall sensor wiring and the, the connecting headers. Now before I go too crazy here drilling the metal lid that uh, my motor wiring needs to run through to my IBT2s, I need to measure what size step drill to use to drill the hole. I don't want to drill a hole too large and obviously I don't want to drill a hole too small. So I'll use my trusty veneers to help me establish the size. 16 millimetres give or take is what I will need to drill those holes in the lid to place these headers. Okay, so that's something that you'll need to consider and I'm just going to use uh, a step drill to get to that size, here's one that goes from six to 20 millimeters. That will do us perfectly fine. Now, if you are using a step drill, guys, hopefully you're using a decent quality step drill. As you can see, this one's got the actual sizes embedded in the step drill. That's very handy. Some don't. So if you need to buy a set of these, uh, get a decent quality set of step drills or one step drill and make sure it's got marks on it so you know actually where you are rather than having to run for your veneers all the time it saves you a bit of time okay so those hole locations for our headers for our motor wiring and for our pots have been put in so i'm going to put those headers in now uh ready to connect up uh put them in before i put all the power supplies in it'll just be a little bit easier the main thing that we need to um, be mindful of is that when we install them we want to install them with the little cups, right, that take the solder facing up. Right, so when they go through, we'll make sure that the cups are facing upwards. So then, obviously, the solder holds in there and the wiring holds in there. A lot easier for us to do that than trying to do that upside down in the box. So if you guys are following suit and you're going to build a box in those dimensions, that's what I'd recommend. So 16 millimetre holes with a step drill, and now I'm going to put the headers in. Okay, just getting these top headers for the motor wires installed. So, little tip guys is when you've basically almost got them lined up to where you want them, have them offset a little bit because as you tighten the main lock nut up here, it will turn the whole assembly inside. And you'll just, you'll get it tight around to where they are sitting uh, parallel or horizontal, the doctor should say. We've just got one more here to put in the top. Uh, the three sensor wire headers are already in the side of the box. So these obviously go with the cups. Again, I'm putting them facing towards the IBT2s. They just come through like that. Probably can't see that on the camera. So they just come in from the underside of the lid like this. You put a washer on, get a little spring washer. And then your nut. And I just tighten it down sort of finger tight. Then I offset it a little bit like that. So then when I do the last bit of tightening, the assembly will come around and it'll be tight. Obviously, I could use a socket here instead of uh, the shifting spanner, but shifting spanner was lying there to be used. And that's it. So that's what it's going to look like on the top when the box is closed. Our motor wires will come in through here and then they'll come up to our YBT sitting just above them. Our USB cable will come through here. I will grommet this with a little rubber grommet. I'll have to have a look around for one of those. I've got a couple of those. Hopefully I've got one that's the right size. And then there's our, uh, our hall sensor pot uh, headers in the side here. I'll run the main 240 volt leads through here and I'll just zip tie both sides so I can't move around. And here I'll probably plate where this old, where all these old headers were from when this was a server box. I'll plate that so then the air pulls through as it should with the fan from the other side here. So uh, that's the box nearly done. Okay, I'm just getting the board with the IBT2s and the Adreno installed on to the lid. Just a washer. Each of the screws. 
they don't come loose. Just got to get one more for here. So that's how to do that, guys. Now, in thinking about this, although my lid already had these um, M3 bolts spot welded into the lid, you could just simply drill the lid, of course, and get your own little M3 bolt or whatever bolt that you would require to come through your board or your perspex, whatever it is that you end up using. If you're going to use a lid like this, you can see the headers are installed here now. Through um, These will take our motor wires up to our terminal block here, so a nice little short throw from uh, there to there. So it's just keeping everything nice and neat and keeping all the resistance between voltages and stuff like that to a minimum by doing things this way. I found my little uh, container of grommets. So hopefully I've got a grommet that'll fit uh, the other side here um, where our USB cable will come through so then it, it won't chafe or wear. It's quite sharp because this is basically a sheet metal, obviously, that this is box is made out of. So it's quite sharp when you drill through it. So anything like that, you need to grommet or make safe in some way so your uh, cables don't rub and then end up um, shorting on the uh, case if you're using metal. I'm just getting the wiring reinstalled now on the power supply. So with this design, I have to run the uh, power leads through the box first before I install them in the power supplies. Otherwise, uh, the actual plug socket won't fit through the box. Now, as mentioned before, guys, remember, especially when we're talking about these mains voltages here, make sure you have no exposed wiring whatsoever. Otherwise, there will be trouble. Because dead is dead, guys. Dead is dead. Okay, there's no coming back. Unless you're Jesus Christ, apparently. Otherwise, you're kaput. I'm just getting the power supply 12 volt side into my IBT2s. Now, it's important, guys, not to mess this up. You must get the polarity right on these or you will destroy your IBT2s as soon as you power up. So you must get this right. It's not going to matter so much on the motor side. You'll end up re reversing the polarity on your motors. But on the power side to the IBT2s from our power supplies, you have to get this right. Okay, now on the IBTs on the underside, it'll tell you motor and power or battery is what it says. B plus, B negative, M plus, M negative, battery, motor. In our case, of course, we've got power supply. So we're talking about where it says B plus and B minus. Make sure you get those the right way around uh, or you will fry your IBT2s and they will not work, funnily enough. Now, don't screw these down too tight, just firm, okay? So that's something to keep in mind when you're wiring these. You must double check your polarity from your power supplies into your IBT2s. Now, it goes without saying, guys, that any of our connections from our power supplies into our IBT2s, we must tin all of the ends, okay? Don't just leave them bare wire. Make sure you tin them. Now, these little ones here, they connect into my fan. All right, that's what that's all about. I wouldn't want anyone to panic about what was going on there. Oh, my God, what's the doctor doing? What are those things? What do they do? Well, that's what they do, okay? They go into the fan, so there's no need to panic, peeps. I'm running the fan off the power supplies have power supplies will run off the fan you obviously you know you're always wrestling and managing cable management while we're doing this there we go 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 it's a nice little song the doctor was singing isn't it that's a little one called there we go and this is an absolute schmozzle I'm going to have to redo a few things in this. Now, as far as cable management goes, peeps, it's never a bad idea to use a few cable ties, or as we call them, zip ties, because they make that zippity zing noise that I love so much. So that is one way you can help manage your cables, is to apply the odd zip tie here and there, or the odd cable tie here and there, just to keep things neat, just to keep wiring out of the path, or out of the way of other wiring. It's not going to hurt. Cable ties or zip ties are reasonably cheap. Um, so, you know, there's something that's obtainable for the average hard-working man or woman. 
Uh, it's not beyond your ability to obtain a few zip ties and keep your cables a little bit neater. That's the power supplies to the IBT2s wired. Okay guys, we're up to wiring our motors now and getting them set up here on the terminal blocks on the IBT2s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse the negative side and it doesn't really matter. It can be, you can fuse the positive side or the negative side. Try not to get too confused. <laughs> He's at it again. He's at it again. Okay, anyway, I am fusing the negative side of the IBT2. And like I said, this is a really chunky material. So what I've done, guys, is I've, I've, got, a, I've got a flux pen here, right? So I've just, I'm just cleaning these little tabs in our connectors here. I want them to be really clean. I want them to take solder really nicely. Oh, yeah, look at that smoke. We love it. So, yeah, we just need to fill these. All right. And we're just going to add this. Just like that. And there we have it. You cannot get much wilder than that. But it el workos. So that's one. So we're going to do that, obviously, for each one of these IBT2s. We're going to fuse them. Let's do a little quick check here. Make sure this is all going to sit inside. Beautiful. Look at that. I don't know what anybody was ever worried about. So we're on the track here, guys, to a very neat and tidy uh, electronics box for our rig. Now, hopefully, you have decided to um, go with a similar size box, either build something or see if you can track something down. This is a very good way of doing it. It's a lovely, nice, neat way of doing it, that's for sure. That's all the fuses in to the negative side of the IBT2 motor terminal blocks. So we've got our power supply side all wired into our IBT2s now, and we've got our fuse in for our motor side of the IBT2s. Now I just need to connect the wire from the IBT2s to our headers here. Uh, that will be the positive power supply to our motor. Now the doctor has been using blue for his positive. So all of his positive wiring is blue. Okay, now this is wire left over from an automotive wiring kit that I bought from American Auto Wire in America because I rewired my classic car about 18 months ago. I, I did a rewire bumper to bumper and I bought a 12 circuit wiring kit through American Auto Wire. And this was the standard gauge for most of the wiring. It was awesome. It is a really chunky wire. So when I say it's a 16 gauge, that's why I mean 16 gauge like in American terms. This is an American wire uh, wiring kit that I purchased. So this is the gauge wires that I'm using into uh, from the power supplies to the IBT2s and from the IBT2s to my motors is all 16 AWG. Okay, guys, that's all of our power side of our IBT2s taken care of. Okay, so our power supply and to our motors. Fused at our power supply end, okay, to our IBT2s and now fused from our IBT2s to our motors. Okay, so now we need to look at uh, the wiring from our IBT2's pinouts to our Arduino. Now, we will be using our schematic that we have downloaded, okay, to do this. Doctor, that was disgusting. The doctor truly is an animal. But anyway, guys, that's all we have time for today. So in our next session, we will tackle the schematic and the wiring from our IBT2s to our Arduino. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.